Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Greg Gallagher, and I'm here to tell you about SpoorTrack. So we are relatively new to the animal tracking space, um, but I'll give you a short history of where we've come from. We've been in the tracking business for well over 20 years. We were formed in 2001 as an embedded software engineering company. Whoops. Um, and in 2003, we developed a Iridium-based solution for ESCOM to uh, monitor and remote uh, to monitor remote uh, substations. In 2005, we developed the first elephant tracker using the, the same hardware as the ESCOM project. Then, between 2005 and 2012. We produced various development kits, uh, Iridium, uh, OEM trackers. Many of them were sold to uh, South American logistics companies. And then in 2013, we were approached by a NASA, a NASA scientist um, to develop a tracking system for a Greenland uh, ice water melt project. That was really um, <clears throat> set us up to really produce uh, products that we can commercially sell today. In 2016, we developed an aircraft tracker uh, under the Beagle Tracker brand, and in 2018 we launched our first solar-powered bird tracker, also under the Beagle Tracker brand. Then in 2021 we decided that aircraft tracking and animal tracking should be separated, and we then created Spur Track. So this is just to pay homage to Alberto Bihar from NASA. Uh, we worked closely with him for. Uh, we own a half, and really, he pushed us. He drove us to develop some, you know, up our game uh, incredibly. And I think, probably, if we hadn't worked with him, we might not be here today. So, what are the pros and cons of using Iridium? So, first of all, the pros: there's no terrestrial infrastructure needed whatsoever. Um, it's got full glo global coverage, coverage, land and sea. There are no black spots, dark spots, shadows, anything. It's two-way, so not only do devices send data to us, but we're able to send settings and configuration updates to the devices. It's relatively low latency, two seconds, so from the device, uh, time the device sends to the time it reaches our servers, it's about two seconds. And it can support a relatively large amount of data, so we've got devices, oops, sorry about that, sending a seven and a half kilobytes a day. I'll get used to this. <laughs> Um, and the cons, of course, size and weight. So it's a lot bigger and heavier than GSM and Sigfox and LoRa solutions. And of course, there are data costs that apply. So for our bird trackers are solar powered. Um, we have many different uh, variants for many different species. We can transmit up to 32 positions per day. We've got built-in three-axis accelerometer, permanently sampled at 25 hertz. We've got uh, a couple of optional extras, so we can fit on an air pressure sensor and also a, a VHF transmitter. I must say the VHF transmitter comes with a 48 centimeter um, antenna, and we don't have a lot of interest uh, in that optional extra. For the solar collars, um, again, various lengths for various types of animals. Our smallest is uh, a 250 grams for a cheetah collar. We've actually um, recently bought out a 230 gram wild dog collar. Uh, again, they all include three axis accelerometer. Uh, VHF is standard, and you can configure VHF over the air, so via Iridium. And again, uh, we can get up to 32 positions per day, depending on environment. So are there limitations? Absolutely. Number of transmissions is inversely proportional to the availab availability of sunlight. Uh, we've had some disappointing results by not strictly uh, adhering to this equation. Um, we, we do have our, our software which takes care of uh, energy management as the battery starts falling, so we take care of it to some extent. But uh, for environments that are really dense, uh, I think we'd have to assess that before uh, we actually deployed units. Birds are obviously a lot more forgiving, um, spend a lot of time uh, up in the air and lots of sunlight. In terms of longevity, uh, this graph shows data received for the month of October 2023. On the x-axis is the device age in months, 
and on the y-axis is the proportion of data received by various devices of different ages. So we can see that we've got devices well over four years that are still pumping away data. Um, in fact, many of these are pumping 30, uh, 30 position, uh, positions per day. We spent a lot of energy on our device management portal. Uh, it gives you, the customer, full control over your device. You can add, remove devices. You can activate, deactivate, suspend. You can change all your device settings, change the schedules, transmission schedules, GPS, accuracy. You can change your attributes, what, whether you want speed, altitude, pressure, v uh, change VHF if you've got VHF on board. And of course, an easy way to manage uh, your, your third-party endpoints, including Earth Ranger. We'll get to more in a second. Um, we also allow the customers to have a, a configurable or a custom device identifier. So instead of sending an IMEI, which is a very long number and it might be a bit meaningless to you, you can, you can enter something that's a lot more meaningful, for example, Vulture One. You've also got uh, detailed billing and usage information and, of course, access to our own live tracking site. Here is how you set up Earth Ranger, in fact, MoveBank as well. So you get an API key from Earth Ranger. You just punch it in, hit the checkbox. If you want MoveBanks, you just uh, type in your username, hit save, and from that point, all your data will be terminated at MoveBank or Earth Ranger, whatever else you've set up. So that is it. Um, please contact us at uh, sporttrack.com, info at sporttrack.com, or on our website, the contact form. We've also uh, exhibiting, so you're welcome to, if you've got any questions afterwards, come and ask us. Thank you for your time. Hi, everybody. Um, it's always great to be here at uh, Earth Ranger, seeing old faces and connecting to people around the continent and the world. And I'm also very happy to see that there's a lot of new faces coming in. Oh my god, that's the first time somebody claimed that I needed a microphone. <laughs> um, I'm Henrik from Savannah Tracking, and um, uh, we have been coming here over the years. I think a lot of you are familiar with me, familiar with our products. Uh, so what I'll focus on today is a little bit uh, on what we have brought on to the market over the last uh, one and a half year, year, one and a half year. New features uh, to our systems and models. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, our uh, auxiliary solar charging on all our standard collars, um, time released on elephant collars, new features on our program, and also what is coming up early uh, next year of new, uh, new systems coming on board with Laura uh, Kainese uh, uh, satellite system. Um, firstly, um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, our uh, combined primary and solar charge system. We started experimenting with uh, solar charging now five years ago, I think, on, uh, on both Vulture Tech, Tax and, uh, and um, Giraffe Tax. Uh, that was purely solar charged units. And we were getting a lot of good results. We started experimenting with solar charging on elephants uh, three, four years ago, on specifically reintroduction of orphaned elephants uh, done in northern Kenya, uh, why our client saved the elephants. And uh, that led us to uh, start putting more and more solar panels on different things, and we got so good results that we are actually now having, uh, we st about a year ago, we decided to put solar charging on every unit we have. That doesn't mean that uh, they're totally depending on solar charging. They still have uh, primary cells. So the unit will uh, recharge uh, uh, the rechargeable battery and favor that and uh, run on solar as much as it can. Um, and then if it's either you are asking it to do more than the solar charging can sustain, or uh, panels can be covered on occasions with dirt and, and, and stuff like that, it switches to the primary cells. You don't see it in the data. It just continues recording whatever you, you need. Um, and then it waits until the solar charging battery uh, recharges, and then it jumps back again. Um, and it favors the solar charging, so it's like, uh, once eventually panels will probably over the year start de degrading and scratching and so on, but then you actually saved your uh, uh, primary cells to the, to the last. Just to put it into perspective, we, uh, we have units running in North America on deer, 
uh, that are the client started running uh, 15 uh, sorry half an hour GPS positions uh, and uh, four uploads via Iridium a day. It didn't touch the primary cells at all. That was in the middle of the winter in Colorado. Uh, it's not very light there uh, at that time. And he then increased it to uh, 15 minutes. That's 96 positions a day. And uh, at that level, it was running um, with 70% covered with solar and 30% on, on primary. So uh, the smart thing about that gives you the flexibility for shorter periods of time, really cranking up the, the output if it's so, so whatever can't be sustained by solar, it then picks from, from the primary cell. Uh, we have client, clients working on uh, human wildlife conflict situations where you, for periods of time, really need frequent and high resolution data. Not all the time, maybe for months. You yank that up. Once a problem has disappeared, you scale it down again. And, uh, and that's where the primary cell comes, comes in neatly. Uh, we have a whole variety of different uh, models. So, um, you combine our stand and we can talk about and, and showcase uh, that. Also, our elephants are now running um, most of the time. I mean, the one we first got out on bull elephants two, three years ago are running, I think, almost exclusively on, on solar. Um, we have um, also introduced a timed elephant drop-off. Uh, so you can release it uh, again uh, after a specified amount of time. I don't know if this here, how I actually start that with this. No, oh, that was a little bit of a video that doesn't work with this system, I think. Um, but basically, it uh, it is a replacement of the of the normal counterweight, uh, so the collar doesn't get heavier. It just have a release mechanism uh, uh, integrated into it, and you replace the, the the traditional counterweight with the release mechanism. So that's one of the things we brought on. We are miniaturizing that now, so uh, watch this space. In a few months' time, we will have it for more normal-sized colors uh, miniaturized. Uh, so that's coming out soon. Uh, we have also upgraded our uh, own platform, the SDM. Uh, we, of course, here at EarthRanger, some, all of you will probably use EarthRanger. We are fully integrated with EarthRanger, also with MoveBank. Uh, there are a number of additional features uh, that you can use if you have our own software in terms of uh, adding uh, additional information, your auxiliary information that gets uploaded to the server, uh, time of deployment, species, and so on. Uh, there's a whole suite of different level access levels, uh, should you not use EarthRanger. Uh, but you can add those information and upload and share it with, uh, with your, with your uh, other users. Uh, and there's also overview of whether our mortality alarms or excessive motion alarms have been activated or not and so on. So there's a whole number of additions to that. If you are existing Savannah tracking users, please come by and we can do a small breakaway session and, and, uh, and go through the new features. We're also happy to set up Zoom uh, training sessions for anybody, uh, either if you're existing users or if you want to hear more about um, our program or our, our features, we can set that up. Uh, we also have a demo account with a number of units, so if you want to see what the hell is going on, how does it look like, how does it work, we can set you up with an access to that. The only thing you can't do is reprogram the animals because it's actually animals out there. Uh, so <laughs> we don't want that to change. Uh, lastly, uh, we are working on uh, um, a combined LoRa Kainese uh, system that's going to be launched uh, very early next year. Uh, it's going to have LoRa as its primary uh, pipeline of data. If you have a LoRa van system, it'll send all the data via that. Uh, but it does have Kinese. It's kind of like the next generation Arcus system. Uh, so either if an animal moves outside your LoRa van network or is in a dead spot or shadowy area, um, should you have some flash traffic, especially linked to mortality alarms or other alerts that really need to get through, you have the satellite capacity or capability within the unit. Uh, and um, uh, so all, all the kind of nice to have data gets offloaded via LoRa and the urgent messages can go push through uh, Kinese. It can also run 100% on satellite. So um, also um, that same unit will have an I2C connector uh, for you who are familiar with, um, with things like that. It basically means that it's open for additional sensors. We are currently ourselves working with gunshot detectors uh, and other things that being, can be 
linked into our electronics uh, and uh, then use our electronic as kind of like the communication platform. But uh, if anybody's interested in saying, okay, we need a light uh, photo sensor or something else or something else, we can actually create or we can collaborate on, or you can create yourself boards that can then be integrated and plugged into our system. So you utilize our GPS and communication ability and then you put your own sensors on and then um, obviously we'll need to work on, on the enclosures and, and designs. Uh, that will also be available for our Iridium uh, units um, as for next year. Uh, so that's a little bit of the new things that we have uh, in the pipeline, either already implemented or in the pipeline. So uh, feel free to, to come by and uh, ask more questions, see some of the equipment we have. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, hello everybody. Um, thanks to Ranger for giving us a bit of time to present as well. Um, my name's Stuart, I'm from Africa Wildlife Tracking. Um, I kind of help manage the core information systems at the company, um, mostly collecting data, securing it, um, and making it available. Um, some contact information, um, if you'd like to get hold of the office, get some more information about our products. Um, so really the mission of AWT has been to help conservation efforts, um, predominantly through um, advances in telemetry. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Martin and, and Sophie helped, who've been um, sort of involved in the space for a long time. Um, Martin was working as a field technician at the University of Pretoria for a long time, um, sort of the 80s and 90s, uh, where he got a lot of experience um, out in the field, um, specifically tracking data and helping with research projects. Uh, and it was sort of during that time that he um, developed the core products that would eventually become AWT, starting with the VHF units. Um, today we have a fairly global reach. Um, we're in most um, sub-Saharan -sub um, parks throughout Africa, um, and we have quite a big footprint in India and Indonesia. Um, we offer sort of the core products that um, you'll find in most tracking companies. So we do VHF for radio tracking. Uh, UHF is sort of the core of our, um, I'd say our, our sort of core data functionality. So you can send and receive data over UHF. Um, the last three years or so, we added LoRa to our offering. Um, GSM we've had for a long time as well to, to send over cell towers. And we've had a range of satellite units over the years. Um, currently, we only support uh, Iridium. Um, we've sort of found it the most um, versatile and useful for our use cases for our clients. We've collared um, big and small. We've done uh, marine, terrestrial. Uh, we've done birds. Um, so yeah, we, we've done collars, implants, um, abdominal implants, um, rhino horn implants. So uh, there's really a range of use cases that um, our technology can be applied to. Um, we also offer a LoRaWAN managed solution. So uh, a lot of the difficulties we've seen with, with managing LoRa is, is choice of infrastructure setup as well as um, server. So we've, for about three years now, also been offering a managed service where we help um, plot out your, your um, site, see what would make sense in terms of number of towers and location. Uh, we can set up SOTA or help run power, um, power over Ethernet or GSM connections. Um, and um, yeah, so w with that, we've got um, connection to the WANASI server, which we use. Um, it's a managed server solution, so there's not a lot of config. We find it's been probably the most reliable solution we've looked at so far for managing that data, um, which is so we're quite happy to use it for our clients at this point. And the predominant station we use is the Kerlang Gateway. Um, on our current sort of generation devices, um, we, we log everything. We, um, anything that doesn't get sent will be sent on a retry. And if we can't make it on a retry, it can be downloaded manually later on. Um, so we think of that as essentially layers of redundancy. So if you lose connection to your tag, maybe a, a, something happens to the GPS or the, the satellite antenna or the LoRa antenna, uh, you'll always be able to find your tag using VHF and download the data over UHF. Um, customers who would like to can use their own encryption key sets. All of our location data is encrypted on the device. Um, 
almost every order we get is built um, custom made for the use case. Uh, we've always got requests for uh, weight and size, um, different environments. Um, sometimes depending on the type of animal you're, you're coloring, if it's in a more wet condition or dry condition, there's going to be um, sort of certain nuances to the build that we're going to create for you. Uh, we offer solar devices. Most of our devices come, come with a solar option as well. Um, so this is a bit of a roadmap for the next year or so. Um, our devices have had Bluetooth built in for almost a year now. Um, we've released an APK recently which lets you interact with that. So really the plan behind that is when you're launching a device in the field, you would want to configure settings before fitting to an animal. Uh, this saves you having to do it over the air. Um, with that app, you'll also be able to download data um, and sync it to our database automatically. Um, you can currently do that as well with UHF transceivers. We have a data management utility, which um, if you download positions using a transceiver, you can upload to our database. Uh, all data is, um, can be accessed through MoveBank and through EarthRanger as well. There's integrations with them. Um, otherwise, we also have a web application where you can view your data. Um, we've got a data logger device, as we're calling it right now. Uh, we're piloting it this month, um, and we're hoping to have it available in the market from the beginning of next year. Um, essentially, it's a device that can take a very high number of readings, um, particularly useful for um, machine learning use cases, for advanced data use cases. Um, data from that will be, can be interacted with through a Bluetooth app as well and sync to our servers. Um, we're releasing our own uh, receiver from next year as well. Um, also, it should be piloted in the next two, three months. Uh, we have VHF, UHF, and Bluetooth support for that. Um, so with that receiver, you'll be able to track animals over VHF, um, as well as change settings and download data through the UHF and BLE models. Um, we're currently busy with um, sort of version two of our API. Um, there'll be more commands to generate different reports on your, on your devices and get different sets of data. Um, we also, we currently don't allow for downlink communication through API, which is something we've been working hard to change. Um, what will be nice about that is through platforms like EarthRanger, you, you'll be able to change your device settings as well. Um, I, and also, um, we're going to offer better support for um, ChirpStack and for the Things Network. Um, we're trying to make that a bit more seamless for people who choose to use those servers. Uh, we also have our own drop-off device. Um, we're planning for the end of next year. We've started with it. It's not quite as far along as some of the others, um, but that will be for all of our colors. Um, we're hoping to have that as a standard feature. Obviously, if you don't want it, you'll, you'll, we can make it without it. Um, but yeah, the, really the thinking behind most devices is that they should be removed at some point in the future. Um, so we'll try to ship that as a standard. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Renee, where are you? There you are. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And uh, hi, everybody. I'm Renee from Wintech Solutions. Uh, this one down. Oh, there we go. Thank you. I'm used to the remote. Um, Wintech Solutions is a distribution business. Uh, primarily, we've been in the satellite space for six years. Uh, we launched the Global Star base station. We've been importing and distributing the Global Star and Spot range of products for five years in Africa. Um, and Subsequently, through that, we formed a partnership with uh, GSE. Uh, GSE are a original equipment manufacturer for multiple network providers, uh, Iridium, uh, MRSAT, and GlobalStar. And this product that they've developed is called the GSAT Solar. Um, I'm going to be lazy and play you an intro video. And that uh, summarizes everything in a quick minute for me, so I don't have to. Uh, that one, yeah and play video.
So this product was delighted, uh, designed to be the world's uh, small, smallest and most lightweight um, satellite powered unit um, currently in the market. Um, it's partnership, um, which I'll just jump back to quickly, and that I spoke about briefly earlier. Um, Global Star being a provider of reliable satellite communications, uh, provides a whole lot of chipsets. GSE integrated this uh, chipset into their product, which is the um, GSAT Solar. And I mean, that's an impressive network. They transmit over 1.8 billion messages a year. They track and monitor um, assets in over 100 countries and, and six continents. Um, through the spot products, which are, m a lot of you use and are integrated with Earth Ranger as well, we've got rangers and, and people on the field using those for vehicles, individuals, um, and two way satellite messaging through the handheld devices. Um, and that network at the core of um, this technology allows us to uh, develop the product that GSE has done. So GSE um, is an uh, engineering company, um, a group of very clever engineers who have spe specifically developed in military, aerospace, oil and gas, shipping, security, and marine. Uh, so they've got a lot of experience with all the major uh, manufacturers. Um, some of our big clients are detailed here. And a lot of these products and solutions um, are integrated with a lot of the products that you may see and use already. Um, you might just not know them if they, they are white labeled and um, have our solution at the heart um, and are being used somewhere else. That's the video I played you earlier. So this is the device, um, very small, very lightweight. Um, that's what it looks like over here. Um, it's got a solar panel on the front and it charges the internal battery. That internal battery um, then runs the uh, antenna, which sends out different locations depending on how you configure it. Um, the unit's got Bluetooth, so you program it from the app on either iPhone or Android, and you can set this unit up to 24 locations uh, a day, so every every hour to, to send a location. And um, you can configure the unit. It's got BLE4, so um, about 20 to 30 meters. You can download new settings and new firmware onto the device if there's updates or upgrades. Um, and I'll take you through the data a little bit later for those scientists and ecologists and researchers that want all the nice uh, nitty gritty stuff. There's some very technical um, information that we can give you from the unit. And um, this is some of the um, new mounting brackets that we, are, that we are coming up with, along with, oh sorry, I skipped over the Earth Ranger integration. Um, so <clears throat> integrated API, um, all we have to do is uh, give you your key to set up to your existing account. Um, there's no additional cost from our side to do that. Um, these are some of the new mountings that we are coming out with. Um, currently, we've got uh, just a, a, a single and a double um, ear tag, as well as a bracket. Um, so for those people that are using this on existing animals, um, we have a, a plastic clip bracket that uh, webbing for a collar can go through to securely collar the unit um, onto an animal. Um, and these are prototypes which we should have for next year, which uh, create a lot of versatility um, to avoid a lot of um, yeah, infection, uh, mounting, spacing between veins, ear sizes, pin lengths for different thicknesses of animal ear. Um, so we've done quite a lot of research with quite a few vets to come up with some clever mounting. Um, this use case um, is it's quite detailed. Um, there's a lot here, and uh, we please come to the stand. We can talk through it later. But this was uh, probably our biggest deployment just a month ago of 400 units in the Kruger National Park. Um, we deployed these units um, for the collective tracking of uh, African buffalo. And that was to do quite a few things. So one was tasked with understanding the buffalo movement in the Kruger, um, bovine TB disease, and the human-animal uh, conflict. So we were tasked with this project to come up with a solution. Um, on, and what we did was we actually customized the tracking intervals for um, the device. We were able to export the accelerometer uh, payload data with uh, a specific sampling rate, um, as well as speed, distance, time, long lat, and all the information that the customer required to be able to give them uh, the feedback that they needed for their scientific analysis. And um, I'm not going to go through all of this. There's a lot of uh, information here that, uh, 
that, that comes out of the device, and this is effectively the outcome of the, of the project. So um, here you can see the type of sampling and the type of data that was used. Um, this was the deployment of the units. Um, here are the locations and you know, kind of the mapping interface. What's quite powerful with these um, is the Bluetooth. You, we can program units to talk to each other, so for clustering, movement apart and away from each other. It's quite powerful. Um, we can set heartbeats out of the device, so we can test for mortality, and if a unit's been stationary for a certain time or it hasn't been moving, that uh, there's a problem with that particular asset. Um, so we really configured a, a unique solution here to come up with this deployment of, um, of over 400 devices, which has been working uh, well now in the field. So this is quite a nice use case for us. Um, and just here are a load of pictures where we've integrated. We've been playing with a lot of different species and animals. Um, we've done um, embedded into elephant tusk. Uh, we've in embedded into uh, rhino horn. Um, we've done ear taggings on, on many uh, different types of animals, small and large. And if you've got any other questions, please come and chat to us upstairs. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. Um, my name is Peter Stolwerk, uh, founder of Arcanum Africa. And, uh, first time here, so we're very excited to present our company. We just founded two years ago. Who are the founders? Uh, it's myself, Peter, and Aaron, my business partner, standing there in the corner. Um, both based in Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, not by origin, as you can hear, my accent is Dutch. But I moved here seven years ago because I fell in love during a holiday, went to the Kruger Park, and never wanted to leave, and moved to one of the places in, in the world where I think most people would like to spend the rest of their lives. Um, we are both entrepreneurs. Uh, we have been founding successful businesses for over our past career, but we also share a similar passion, uh, besides CrossFit, uh, that is uh, spending uh, a lot of time in nature, spending a lot of time in the wildlife, uh, and combining uh, that passion and protecting that valuable wildlife with technology, uh, which comes from our entrepreneurship. So where do we get... Oh, just pressing the wrong button. Um, Personally, we're coming from a, uh, a long career in special operations globally, um, uh, and then eventually moved into transition into the entrepreneurial life, which was a big transition. But eventually found a business in the UK and Europe to support one of the, and still actively supporting one of the most elite military units around the world, with a specific uh, focus on collective intelligence and supporting them in the most hardest conditions with technology that is fit to purpose, straight away uh, working in the operation, not something that has to be redeveloped or be re-engineered, something that is focused on supporting them in their challenging operations. And that's what we try to leverage now into our passion is wildlife protection and get my background, the background of the businesses I founded and the network coming with to get technology into the uh, wildlife space and the wildlife protection space that is able to work in the remote and the most challenging conditions, because I believe that's where you more all are operating. A lot of the standard products will, uh, will be a challenge to give you the results that you want to achieve. But rest assured, most of those uh, conditions are being trialed and tested uh, by big funding, by military organizations, to make them able to get to do all the operations they did around the world. And that's why we try to find those technologies, make them fit for purpose, and make them fit, hopefully, for your budgets as well because military is a different uh, space. Um, one of the main products that we are uh, showcasing here, and feel free to come upstairs and, and look at this, is one of the, it is a core, was a core military product that we took into the security space. Uh, it's been deployed from the Arctic to the desert in border uh, protection and in uh, military compound protection. Uh, it's a camera solution that we believe is very reliable, extremely doable, uh, and one of the essential keys to, do, uh, to get wildlife imagery and, and uh, protection and, and uh, censoring into areas where previously it was non-existing. Um, as the core of the system, as you see on the top right, this is actually in Kruger Park, um, that's, a, that's our bridge. Our bridge is the only part of the uh, system that holds a SIM card. Uh, to that bridge, we can connect over a, a private net mesh network. We can create uh, up to eight of those cameras, which each can be deployed up to a kilometer away uh, from that bridge. So the bridge can be in a 
2G, the last part of your bars that you see on your uh, mobile phone. That's where you can leave the bridge behind, and from that you can start meshing into an area where there's zero to none uh, mobile network. You only use one SIM card also per eight cameras. Um, the system runs over a very advanced AI, so you only will get alerts, and uh, we've been testing this for more than two years now in, in, in different environments here. You, got, you don't get, the, the most comments I get, does it still work, because I, I don't get anything on my, on my cameras, because normally you get the thousands and thousands of alerts that you're coming over a daytime uh, uh, over your uh, mobile phone. No, you can only get if it's a human or it's a vehicle detected, that's when it will alert you. But on the other hand, we have full HD day and night pictures of wildlife, any other movements in the area that's stored in the back end and that can be reviewed. Um, we also uh, we have separated two different uh, cameras. There's a day and a night camera in there, so it's not one that combines. So best of both worlds. Um, we use a ultra long battery life, which is uh, an ultra long is 400 days on one charge or 50,000 events. So it means if you put this on a busy road here in the center of Cape Town, your battery life will go down very quickly. Uh, but if you put this in a remote area, you, you will get close, very close to the 400 days of battery life of one single charge. Um, the uh, deployment is very, very easy. Uh, we, we have them upstairs. You can either use a screw that you can put in the tree. We have straps that you can put around. It's, uh, it's literally deployable in minutes. You prepare it. Uh, uh, at, the, at your station, uh, take it in a backpack, put it in the field, and you can actually even move it around and put it at different locations. Uh, very, very, very simple. As I said, it uses military-grade mesh uh, technology. One of the other benefits and uh, something which I think is overlooked in wildlife protection is encryption and cybersecurity. Um, I do see a risk in the camera traps where there is SD cards that can be removed because besides your valuable maybe intelligence and seeing the uh, actually perpetrators on those images, they, it's very easy to sneak up on those cameras, get the SD card out, put it in the computer, and see exactly at what time and at what, what wildlife is at that water hole, what, what wildlife is going over that specific route, put the SIM card back and you never know that they have been there. We don't have uh, SD cards in there that you can take out. It's a, a solid state hard drive in each component up to one terabyte. Uh, they are AS128 encrypted, which is one of the, for a security perspective, very high level of encryption. Uh, even if you would be able to break open one of the devices, it's, it's gonna take you, even if you're NSA, it's gonna take you a few months uh, to get that open and get the, get the imagery out. And the same level of encryption is going over everything which is transmitted. So if they would try to intercept the signal, it's fairly impossible. Some last, the last slide, some other examples of projects where we, uh, we are currently busy with. Uh, mesh technology to create communication in areas where there is currently nothing. So again, a, a military spin-off of uh, the way it was communicated. We come into an area operation. We don't want to rely on any network, no cell phone. We use our own communication platform, set it up, and within minutes you have your private IP network that can communicate anywhere. Um, a, uh, AI for drones, which is edge-based, so very simply, uh, the DJI Maverick or the DJI 300, we have a box that we can deploy on each of those uh, uh, drones. You can use your own drones, but the box works on the edge to do wildlife uh, counting. Mo a lot of the animals are already in there. It can fly over specific routes uh, and give you the, the fully automated counting. Fire protection gives you the instant hotspots of those uh, areas. And while it does it, can up to three to four different tasks at the same time. Also, when there's a, uh, a human detected in that area, instantly gives you a, uh, a warning as well and a visual of that specific plot spot. Um, below, uh, a, uh, still in development, a uh, ranger uh, uh, light trap system, so to protect during uh, arrest operation, remotely or sensor controlled. Uh, Project we've done with uh, providing uh, for the dogs infrared, very small lights that can be seen uh, up to eight kilometer distance. Uh, very unique, changed the operations uh, instantly. Uh, and we also recently been developing on the same unit a, uh, a special harness for dogs to protect them against bites and cuts and, and sharp knives. And uh, they try to uh, cut into it and put a knife into it while wearing themselves and it's uh, yeah it gives a very high level and still is a lot of breathability for the dogs as well um, and then on this right our camera pack as a package looks like that's it for me uh, please
welcome you upstairs at our site, and then uh, we're happy to chat to you there. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Uh, yeah, please, on a daily basis, these uh, organizations will be up in the uh, vendor marketplace, which is in the atrium. There's coffee, there's treats there. So grab some and go and talk to them about what they're doing uh, to really change the game here. Uh, so thank you. Uh, also, tomorrow, there'll be uh, other organizations that are presenting their products and services. Uh, that'll be from 1 to 3 o'clock in this room. Thank you.